Hey, it's uh, Wiggles, and I built a thing. Uh, this is a 5.8 gigahertz uh, diversity ground station, and uh, just going to give you a little quick tour of it, show you how I built it, and uh, show you the guts of it, as well as some of the ideas I had when I was designing it. So, uh, as far as design stuff, um, what I was really going for is something that's small and compact. Uh, so the whole receiver is about 6 inches by 6 inches by 4 inches deep. So it's small, it fits in a backpack, uh, very easy to pack up. I didn't want any fiddly bits, so I wanted it easy to set up. Uh, not a lot of wires hanging or connections for the video feed or antennas, so I wanted it all very discreet, easy to set up, nothing to deal with, just hit a switch, plug it into my goggles, good to go. Uh, third, I want a great reception, so I have diversity in it, uh, so I can combine, say, an Omni antenna with a directional and get good penetration, as well as be able to fly behind myself, or pair two uh, directional antennas together to create a very uh, high gain field of reception. Um, over a wide area and uh, I wanted some features so uh, as far as features I have diversity with two antennas uh, plug and play very simple to just uh, hit a switch plug in your goggles you're good to go I wanted mounting options so I included uh, rubberized feet on it as well as tripod mounting options uh, I wanted battery monitoring um, so I run a 6000 milliamp uh, 2S LiPo in it, uh, which is fairly big battery load for a ground station. It doesn't take much power, but I wanted to be able to monitor what my battery voltage was so I knew if I was getting low on charge. Um, and also I wanted USB charging, so if I had to charge my GoPro batteries or my Xiaomi Yi or uh, my Mobius or cell phone, um, I wanted to be able to just plug in a USB cable and I was good to go. Uh, also, um, I wanted an access lid so I could get to the connections, I could um, easily charge the batteries, and uh, I wanted to be able to easily create ventilation if it's really hot outside, I have electronics inside so I could crack the lid open and cool it off. Uh, finally, I wanted to be very easily able to change the band of the receiver or the channels and uh, if you know you notice something in this video uh, that you think could be improved on this ground station uh, just give me any suggestions that you might have so uh, yeah those were the design features I was thinking about when I was building this and uh, now I'll just give you a quick little tour of the unit so First we have an on off switch, sends power to all the devices on board, uh, powers off the receiver. Inside uh, I got my voltage monitor, I have two USB ports for charging cell phones, uh, HD camera batteries, any kind of US, uh, USB device that you have, and then I have a rubberized grommet here which has my output uh, wire which sends both my video, audio, signal as well as the power line. Uh, into my Dominator goggles. A little bit of tour on, actually on the back, uh, we have a 5.8 Omni antenna as well as a 10 dBi uh, directional crosshair antenna um, from IB Crazy. So with this I get good Omni reception both in front to the sides and the back of the unit and then I get a very strong uh, high gain reception from this directional antenna. Uh, if you want, you can also use a helical, which gives you a slightly lower gain, but wider field in front. Whatever you want to use works, but uh, I have these two antennas for a diversity reception. I also have rubberized grommets here and here on the inside of the uh, SMA connection ports. Um, and that's basically just to provide some sort of mechanical buffer um, so that I don't damage my SMA jacks. Uh, on the inside of the unit, first we have two latches, the door opens, so we have easy access to all the electronics inside. Um, I've got 6,000 milliamps of 2S power on board. It's uh, two 
3000 milliamp batteries uh, wired in parallel and they just velcro on there. Um, the reason I designed it like this uh, that you could pull the batteries out is so that I can charge them externally so if I, in the horrible event of a lipo fire which I've had before I don't destroy all the guts inside uh, which would be no fun. Um, inside I've got the uh, Diversity Duo 5800 4.1 uh, diversity receiver and uh, this is a 40 channel receiver it's got the four standard bands so you got your immersion RC your Boscam bands uh, what else the team black sheet bands as well as your race band um, I've got my video wires I've got my power wire to the diversity receiver and then I just have all the necessary wiring to power all these devices um, so that's basically a rundown of the guts inside now if you're looking to build something like this, there's just a few little considerations that you have to take into mind and a couple pieces of gear that you probably want to have. So one of the things inside here, and I'll clear these wires away so you can see, is I have some rubberized foam both on the side here, on the side here, um, and this is adhesive backed. So basically I just pull some tape off, stick it to the sides, and it provides a nice little mechanical buffer so that this receiver is protected inside. I also have two strips of this rubberized foam on the bottom of the uh, receiver housing, um, and that just uh, lifts it off the base, protects it from banging against any of the screws, so it's nice and secure inside. And then what you probably can't see from this view, but I will show you, is I have a tripod mount mounted to the bottom. Um, so here is just an Arca Swiss tripod plate. Um, and then I found on Amazon a tripod mounting uh, adapter which I basically drilled four holes in and uh, mounted this on so I could just screw on my tripod adapter. Also I have some rubberized feet so that when I'm not using the tripod adapter uh, I can set it down say on a picnic table and it is good to go. So the uh, last thing I wanted to show you about the design of this is just the quick wiring diagram in case you want to build something like it yourself. It's very simple. Uh, we've got all the devices, so we've got our voltmeter, USB 5-volt uh, regulator, and our receiver, all wired in parallel, and they're going to go to the second and third pins on the switch. Um, and then when you actuate the switch, it's going to uh, close the circuit from the middle pole to the positive pole, which is going to uh, allow your circuit to be completed and all of that's going to be powered by a 2S LiPo. Now the one thing that is important is that you use a 2S LiPo in this setup uh, because of heat generation. Uh, inside the um, both the 5 volt regulator and the Duo 5800 um, you have voltage regulators that give the internals of the device the proper voltage but if you feed it too high of a voltage you're going to get excess heat generation, you have all these electronics in a closed box, and uh, you could start running into some problems. So just use a 2S LiPo, um, and you should be good to go. So there's a couple of little tools that can greatly help you and make this build easier, and the main one uh, that you might not have is a step bit. Uh, this step bit here uh, basically is a drill bit which bores out holes of uh, stepwise increasing in size uh, diameters and uh, it's really useful for drilling out these bigger holes uh, for my grommet, my power switch, and uh, my USB 5 volt regulator. Also, Dremel's really useful, uh, helps me cut out this slot um, and smooth up all the edges of the other slots. Last thing you might not have, rubberized grommets. They're great for sort of uh, making a more professional looking final product and it serves to protect your cords inside. And uh, yeah, so that's basically a rundown of my 5.8 gigahertz uh, diversity 
ground station. He's out.